Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Maria Jaju and today I am actually doing a Copic drawing. And before I do that, I figured I'd start my warm up with a couple of sketches doing a life drawing from a wonderful, wonderful site called Pixel Lovely. And I'll put a link in the description. It's essentially lots and lots of pictures that you can draw from that rotate to a new photo after 30 seconds or 10 minutes or whatever you want to practice at. So I'm doing a couple of poses in my using my color race pencils in a couple of different colors so I can see what I'm doing and switching over to my nice paper that I do for my Copic markers. Although I am switching out her proportions so that she looks more anime. I've never drawn a satyr before, but I've wanted to for a while, so I looked up some pictures of goats that have these really cool curly Q antlers, horns, horns, and um, they're called longhorn goats, and so that is what I put into this drawing. And then one of my friends has given me some calla lilies from her garden and they have been making me happy by blooming on my desk for honestly quite longer than I had expected these flowers to live. And this was maybe the last day that I could draw those calla lilies from life, from the flowers that are sitting at my desk before I had to uh, say goodbye to them. So I included them in this drawing as well. And my plan here is that although this is a half page, five and a half by eight and a half drawing, I do want to have it be a full on illustration with a background and a feel to it. I picked this particular theme and combination of things because I actually wasn't going to draw today until much, much later in the day. I wanted to go on a hike with my dog. But I woke up and it was so dreary outside and rainy and boring and gray. And so I wanted immediately to sit down and draw something that is happy and colorful and feels a lot more like summer. I have Copic fine liners in both black and sepia. And lately I have been doing more sepia line art because I think it gives a more soft feeling to my drawings and of course later on towards the end of the drawing if I really need to punch up some of the edges I can always outline them again with either the brown sepia or the black but I start with this brown and then it really gets hidden by a lot of the color that I put down and becomes a lot more organic. This is another neat trick that I figured out about anime coloring recently if you make cheeks, shoulders, elbows, knees, and tips of fingers pink and fill in the rest with your flesh tone, it actually looks a lot cuter. I'm not sure why, but it definitely, definitely works. So I recommend that you try it in your next drawing. I also recommend that you try sepia ink in your next drawing and see how it works. And then on this brown tunic bodice thing that she's wearing, it was another cool thing that happened with the Copic markers where I put down the lighter color and I really, really saturated the page with it. And then when I filled the exact same spot with brown, as it dried, it didn't dry flat and even. It dried in this patchy way that made it look like fur. And I've never seen anything besides this kind of paper do it. So I will put the name of the paper in the description as well in case you want to try out this effect. And if you do try this, please do share your work with me in the comments below because I would love to see it. Remember how I said that it was cold and dreary and rainy outside? I was not going to make the sky in this picture anything other than a happy, happy blue. I knew that I wanted her hair to be a fluffy fluffy thing but I actually didn't know coming into this what color I wanted it to be so I did a couple of sketches and I find them to be really really useful because these markers they're not like watercolor you cannot layer a completely different color over them and make it work 
if you get it wrong. So these sketches that have just the barest minimum that you need to figure out what kind of color scheme works are really, really important if you don't know what you're doing going in, which most of the time I don't because I am learning every time and kind of making it up as I go along. I want you to pay really close attention to what I'm doing with the horns here because even though I said that it doesn't work like watercolor, in reality, much like watercolor, if you layer lighter colors over the darker ones, the edges will fade. And what I'm doing here is I am setting up a texture of the horns on both of them, but afterwards I am going over them with this yellow color and that just brings the whole horn together even though the colors that go into each side are actually very very different it becomes one horn that you can believe as a 3d object i keep telling you that copic markers don't layer like watercolor but in reality much like most of my watercolor work that you'll see me do i do a lot of pre-shading with a light purple to establish the values and then the color that goes on top winds up looking a lot more organic and in this case i have tried to replicate this leaf that was given me together with the calla lilies that is just humongous it is larger than the piece of paper that i'm drawing this on by three or four times and it is really beautiful and really intricate and the green that I picked is something that worked really well on top of the purple as you see me try out in the top left and it also is light enough that I can layer these darker colors on top and draw in some of the veins of the leaf as much as I can to establish this background. I figured the drawing was really not complete until I had this leaf in there with it. I wanted to give her that satyr look and that magical look as much as possible and I remembered how in high school when we read the Iliad and the Odyssey they always talked about the doe-eyed Athena or I think even the cow-eyed Athena and they're not saying that because you know her eyes are look like cow eyes they're saying it because cows have really 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 long eyelashes and so do all the hooved animals of the deer family and so when I was drawing her, I really wanted to have her these, they look borderline fake, but they are intended to be really, really large eyelashes to give her that doughy look. As I was saying in the beginning, whenever I get towards the end of a drawing, I do always punch up my line art in the places where it matters. So usually where dark spots meet light spots or under her chin and that helps it give more also of an art nouveau look which is also what I'm going for here and you'll see me as I outline her hair as well to, uh, to give her a little bit of that Alphonse Mucha kind of look to her. Thank you guys for sticking around with me and watching me draw. If you like this kind of thing, which I really do, I have had so much fun recording these videos and talking through them and helping you understand some of the techniques that I use and why, but if you do enjoy watching my work and you want to see more of this, please do subscribe. I have been posting a new picture that I have drawn and a new video about it roughly every week. I do want to get to a regular schedule, but so far I'm still trying to figure out how long it takes me to do something. So thank you very much. Please subscribe. See you next week.